Let me now move into two key uh, principles uh, that you had, you are perhaps familiar with, is the transparency. Uh, I will touch also on the accountability, but transparency is something that we all agree that is so important to f really encourage inclusive governance. When things are all clear and uh, everyone can read from the same script, it's important. So if we consider transparency that in a city everyone can have access and that there's a free flow of information, therefore we can all use the same data, the same information. We may reduce what some of you have come to know as fake news or fake data. We have to have some of this level, a greater level of transparency if you would like to promote inclusive urban governance. And to do so at time, we need to look into uh, institutionalizing such uh, um, ways of operating or uh, working towards most transparent um, urban management. And this can be done through laws, uh, public policies and others but that's upstream. But if you now look at the key, simple, key actions that could help uh, promote uh, transparency in the context of inclusive urban governance, I would like to submit to you that imagine that in your city there, is, there are platforms or spaces for free and open consultations when it comes to the city budget, when it comes to tendering, when it comes to uh, you know uh, publishing the the audit reports which if it's meant to be independent i know many cities uh, those mechanism those instruments do not exist but this could be something that could be uh, considered and some have done so in some context you might be familiar with um, as, uh, including the participatory budgetary that has helped many cities to engage with more much broader uh, stakeholder groups so that they can partake to uh, the, the management and the investment in the city. Uh, another action that you could uh, consider is that just review your administ the administrative procedures in cities to remove anything that is a burden that opens the, the gateway for corruption. Uh, the, the other one is uh, you have seen some mayors who uh, maybe take time to have um, you know, a weekly, monthly open discussion with the public to get really the feedback and present what uh, you know, the administration has been doing. If there are opportunities to create open, timely, free debates on issues of concern of citizens, that creates them transparency. Uh, when you are in an office, you may not know all the issues, daily issues. And your issue might be just one of them among others. But when there is a collective action where everyone has the same issue, that should be an, uh, an issue of public concern. And as a citizen, as an actor in a city, we all have to feel concerned about that. That brings me to the, the point of how do we make public participation work, really from participation to engagement in any in the, the interest or the issues concerning city. Public participation or participation in general or engagement is really, really important in decision making. Decision making concerns anything. It's not only when uh, we are taking a decision, but when they are implemented, when they are audited, evaluated, monitored, because at any point in a city, in a governance system is about decisions and any decisions had impact on various interest groups. So it's important that we create opportunity for engagement participation that is fair, transparent and safe for everybody. So some are not feel prosecuted because they have air some concerns. What action can you do? Think of the principle of solidarity that we are all in together. We are all citizen we all have to take a role, we all have to play a role. A city is a collective space and taking the notion, the personal commitment that this is my duty as a citizen to contribute 
to the betterment of the city is the first action. So the first action starts with you. If we go into the context of what type of instrument could be put in place, in some to promote further inclusive governance, you may go further to have an explicit, very clear legal authority uh, for civil society to engage. That instrument or space or platform that can create for, for civil society, which at time is a source of enrichment in city, ha can be uh, a good instrument to foster participation. Because the participation usually comes as an issue because the civil society is not often involved or engaged in the decision and how the, the things are made. So participation in the context of inclusive uh, urban governance is talking directly to the civil uh, society or the, our civic responsibility because that's where we have been, we have not been doing so well. Public participation also requires that we look at the issue of equity we discussed earlier in terms of uh, uh, gender, in terms of age, in terms of all the type of groups to make sure that those interests are also part and engaged as they wish in the, the, the way in which we like to work together to balance different interests. The same way you create a legal authority for civil society, you can also create um, you know, predictable spaces for public hearing, town hall meeting, uh, forum on internet, whatever system you put in place for engagement. Not one instrument will be uh, sufficient. We have to create many uh, gates, many entries to get different actors to engage. The way the youth may engage, the platform to use by the youth might be different from the one used by women, by men, by the, you know, those who are working in informal sector or working in the public sector or private. So all this platform had to be adapted to the context of the, the makeup of your stakeholders. So that brings me to the end of this topic. A few key messages I would like you to take home and ponder about. Let me start with one. Inclusive urban governance is a process. It's really a process is something that we're going to keep working on. And it's vital to make sure that we embed in ourselves all the universal norms, because we all believe in human rights, we all believe in, the, in life, and that the standards are there to make sure that we meet that um, goal. So it's a process, it's a journey and we cannot do everything at once. So that's the first me message. Make sure that you start your journey immediately. You start making changes where you are, starting where you are. The second message, the principles of good governance or urban governance or inclusive governance speaks directly to the needs of all of us. Let me remind you this principle that I would like you to keep that at the forefront of your work all the time. It's about sustainability, decentralization, equity, efficiency, transparency, accountability, civic engagement and citizenship, security, and I would like justice. All these things will make cities more just and safe for all. So keep the principles of governance at the heart of your action engagement with any actor in the city. So process was one, it's a journey. Second, keep the principle really as your uh, bearing. The third one is about looking at equality or equity. I will emphasize on this because we know that the rights and responsibility of some social groups could be women, men, youth, disabled and other in cities are often left really on the back burner. So key message, please consider equity as really important elements that you have to put at the heart of any urban governance, could be through your, or any decision making, 
any personal engagement, any resource uh, allocation that you may have, any contribution when there is a space to contribute. Again, a journey, the principles, and the issue of equity in cities. So thank you very much for uh, engaging on this important topic, and I wish you well.